There's a concept we need to understand is the difference between tight muscles and short muscles. A muscle that's tight physiologically has input from the nervous system that's going to that muscle, keeping that muscle in a slightly contracted state. Okay? This comes from different areas of our cortex and has to do with muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs inside the muscle. So muscle tightness a lot of time is just an increased tone within that muscle. A lot of times people say, my hamstrings are tight, okay? meaning that physiologically it's contracted slightly. Shortness of a muscle is different. This refers to an actual anatomical shortening of the muscle. If I was to cast my arm in this particular position for several weeks, what will happen is my body will actually take away portions of the muscle on this side and make that muscle shorter because it says, I don't need this extra length in the muscle. If I want to lengthen a muscle which is shortened physically, I have to physically stretch that muscle. And to physically stretch that muscle and get it to actually lengthen, I need to stretch it for 20 to 30 minutes. That's what the research shows. Not just a few seconds or 30 seconds here or there. A lot of times, we're really not dealing with physiological shortness unless it's a long-term adaptation to a problem. We're dealing more with tightness, which is more of a neurological issue. Why is the muscle tight? Is it tight because it's getting too much information coming in? Is it tight because it's compensating for a problem in a different area? That brings us to another uh, problem where we see weakness. There are different types of weakness. We have true weakness where the muscle has been injured. The individual sarcomeres of the muscle can't contract. Okay. And the muscle is going to be impeded in its amount of strength because the connective tissue associated with the muscle is longer or damaged and not able to physically contract. Okay. That's physiological or um, um, anatomical type weakness. We can also see weaknesses from not enough input from the nervous system. Our muscles have individual units in them. They're like a volume control. And they're called muscle spindles. And what happens is if your brain thinks that the muscle is turned on and it's at a 10, when we go to contract that, but it's really only at a two, I'm not going to get a full contraction. Okay. A lot of manual muscle techniques that are used by different types of manual therapists are going to be able to go in and actually alter the, or change the amount of gain in that spindle and normalize that volume control. A lot of times they're going to look exactly the same when we're looking at it. Oh, it's muscles going to appear weak or appear like it's failing. That's where we come into looking at a muscle in a testing situation versus looking at a muscle in a physiological situation. We look at a muscle in a testing situation, we may be in the clinic and we're looking at somebody's deltoid and we're manually testing that muscle and it tests strong. But then when we go out and put them in a situation where they have to use the muscle, such as a side lateral raise or an overhead bench or something like that, and the muscle is actually much weaker. And that's because there's different neurological input to the system that's altering the physiological function of the muscle. So doing this exercise to strengthen it isn't really going to do much to do it. We have to train it specific like we talked about earlier as to the type and speed of contraction.